Hi guys, welcome to Car and Mechanical, and this is my top eBay picks of the week. So we're going to go straight into it. At the end, I'm going to talk about changing the format a little bit, uh, but let's go straight into the 10 cars I've picked out for this week. Now, this first one uh, I've highlighted because of its interest, and so my rules for this video is things need to be interested in a bargain or something to avoid. And what particularly interests me with this as we look through the pictures is this is a Ferrari replica that's based on a Triumph TR7. And I can't really tell what stage it's in. Um, and the person that's fabricated this has gone to quite a bit of effort to show us what they've done with it. And although some of the welding looks not fantastic, it's been ground down, it looks like it's been painted quite well, and they've just kind of shown us the progress pictures of it. So this is quite a passion project of someone that have put into it. And the reason I mentioned I'm not quite sure why I've included some of these pictures, if you know what you're looking at here, I think that this looks a bit kind of either dodgy or a bit okay. And then it, it's finished up quite nice. I personally wouldn't include pictures like this in the listing. I know it's kind of a, a proof of point of pride to show what you've put into it, but I just didn't get that. So with this, it's a Triumph TR7 based Ferrari project. I think it's engineless, but I think it's available with a Rover V8 potentially. So one of the things we've been given is a link to a video of the car. And then we get to see around it as well. And yeah, yeah, so just with this, I thought it was an odd one. I'm, I'm kind of a bit lost as to why the project hasn't been finished more to an extent before selling it on. Uh, it's from a fabricator and body shop. Um, so with this, there's quite a bit of information in the description that goes into everything that's gone into it. And I just find it fairly interesting that it's not been finished. And it could be an interesting project for someone, but I don't think it's close enough to a Ferrari for me to sort of say that it would be a worthwhile replica. Uh, but I think it could be a unique car for someone to own. Okay, the second car is a Toyota Celica GT4. So the prices of these are going up quite a lot at the moment. And looking at this, it appears to be a bargain in need of some love. But we're going to look at the description because there's some things to pay attention to. So obviously paintwork needs sorting on this. Look at the wings are dented, but also things don't look right with that bumper. This part of the wing doesn't look like it's not wrong as such but the bumper's poking out so I'm not really sure what's going on there and we can just look over the car and red cars fade so it sort of needs some attention the bumper doesn't look great there there's some horrible mesh work DIY stuff that's been done um, apparently there's a load of service history with it TRD badge just looks bad so we'll have a quick look at the interior so what we can guess is that the chairs are probably in awful condition because you've got seat covers the rest of the interior kind of looks okay. So the thing I'm going to say to be aware of in this one is in the description it says that it's a non-runner, it's for spares or repairs, it's got no MOT which is to be expected. The gearbox isn't fitted but it comes with one so I'm thinking why has the gearbox been taken off? There is engine bits in the boot. I'm kind of assuming that the drivetrain of this is no good. You know for whatever reason someone's taken it to bits and they've not put it back together so maybe they found something when it was on the way to being repaired. So. I think with this you're probably looking at having to sort the paint out, you have to replace the wings and you're probably going to have to get a new engine and gearbox or you'd kind of count on that. So at £795 it might not be a bad price, um, it may be looking at more of, you may be looking at a fairer price being somewhere towards five to 600 bearing in mind what you might have to do to it. It might be, it just needs bolting back together and it works. Probably not the case though. Okay, for the third car, let's go with one that actually works and drives. So this is a Honda Beat. These are a rear wheel drive mid-engined car. So the engine's actually behind you in these. They're 660cc, and this one's not a bad price for the ones I've seen for sale in the UK. They're quite lightweight. I imagine they'd be quite fun. I've not had a chance to drive one yet, but they are on a list of cars that I'd be interested in the future if I got rid of some of the things that I already had. Now What's quite interesting with this, it looks to be quite clean. And I've seen Honda Beats going for between eight and 10,000, maybe 6,000. Um, this one mentions it's had a few bits and pieces done to it. It's had a few upgrades. Uh, honestly, wouldn't, couldn't care less about stainless steel exhaust or the induction kit. Go out and buy a 30 pound induction kit and I can take it to certain places or fit any exhaust I want for 200 pound. So that doesn't really factor into the price for me, but it does look like quite a clean car. Now, what is interesting with these is you can actually import a 
Honda Beat into the UK for about two and a half thousand pound. That's before you do anything to get it registered in the UK itself and to get an MOT on it, etc., etc. But at four thousand six hundred and fifty to drive it away, they're quite interesting. And if you weren't interested in something like a cappuccino, you know, this is quite a good alternative. Okay, for the fourth car, we've got this Bentley Turbo R. It's two thousand pounds, give or take, for spares or repairs. And I just thought this was kind of the unique kind of one that um, it could be an interesting project if someone wants to kind of rat rod it out a little bit and to do, you know, to get it back on the road. Um, if you've seen Corbin's Trolls Royce, I think that's kind of interesting. I think that kind of concept applied to something like this could be interesting. But they're like quite, I think they're like a 6.7 litre V8 in these with the turbo and they're known to make a bit of power. So. I think if he was looking to buy and restore this, it would cost you a ton. Uh, well, not. I think if he was to buy and restore this, it would cost you a fortune. But if he was to buy and modify it, you could be looking at something very unique and very interesting. Okay, car number five is a Ford Mondeo ST220. And this is more about these cars in general. Uh, I've got a number of issues with this listing. I don't like the wheels on the car. There's a number of issues with the picture. And even just things like the badge here, I don't know why it's put at such a bad angle. Um, but yeah, so the Ford Mondeo ST220, so 3 litre V6 with 220 horsepower, the front wheel drive, I think they're meant to handle relatively well, and they're relatively cheap, they're between one and two thousand pound, and if you drop the badge off it and make it a bit less gaudy with kind of the alloys like this, or to get a cleaner example, it hasn't been kind of tricked out in this way, then they can be quite nice cars. Now, this listing has got some issues with it, I really, really don't like those wheels. They really look quite poor. And then when we look inside, the pictures are quite poor. But these are Recaros that, um, you know, they trade second hand for a good couple of hundred pound, if not more, when they're in Audis. And they are very nice seats. I've had them in my old A3. Um, I think being a Ford, you've got your kind of typical Ford interior. You're not going to step it to kind of the Audi level. But I think if you were to pick one of these up for about a thousand pound, you're not doing too badly to give yourself something fairly interesting and fairly quick to drive. Okay, car number six is a Triumph TR7. This is actually what I was looking for with the car at the start of the video. I was looking to see sort of what cheap Triumphs were kicking about. And these aren't the prettiest of cars, but they're not too expensive either. And if you're brave enough to take on stuff like that, you could have yourself a cheap British rear-wheel drive car. Uh, the sixes go for more money, but I don't think, you know, these aren't probably too bad. Okay, this one's quite bad. You know, if you were to sort of take this on and to just kind of just about keep it on the road and deal with some of the issues, you could have yourself sort of a cheap, fun weekend car. So, I mean, these weren't kind of the last name in power. We have a two litre engine making 105 horsepower. They're outstripped by even sort of the most basic of diesel engines that you'd get now. But it's not to say that you couldn't do certain things to drop certain things in it to make it much better. Okay, car number seven is a BMW Z3 with the 2.8 litre straight six engine. I think the Z3 is an interesting car with the capacity to go up in value and my input on it is just purely based on reviews that I've read from them where you're in the centre of the car and the car kind of pivots about you. Now, I think that potentially price-wise the Z4 might be a better buy for your money at the moment, but I think that these are going to go up in value as time goes on. I don't see as many Z3s as you do Z4s. And what we see happening with E46s and E30s, BMWs that have kind of got the sporty mark to them are going up in price. So this particular Z3 here, it's not the greatest example, but it's not the worst. I think there's a few things on the body that would need sorting. The price that's going for at the moment is £870. So I'm going to try and keep an eye on this. And we're going to see what happens to this price-wise. I think that's going to finish between 1500 and 2000 We'll check, in, we'll check back in on this next week. Okay, car number eight is a Austin Mini. I'm not willing to say rare on this because of just doing some checking, I'm not sure if it is a rare model. It's not to say it is or it isn't, but there are a few things on this I want to point out in this listing, and I can't decide if this is a good or a bad deal or just one to be wary of and it's overpriced. So it appears to have most of the things that it needs. The first thing that stands out to me to be wary of though is this packaging tape. The windscreen should just fit in there, it shouldn't need tape to go in, you could even use kind of the most base of silicone sealant to hold it in place. It's not the right thing but even the proper sealant isn't too expensive, I think there's rust under there. 
Um, so, so that's one of the caution things on this. The other caution thing is this, and where it's part of the main body, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to either repair that and cut the muscle out and put it back on, or it's gonna need big panels replaced, and so there's some big effort that's needed there. But if we look at the positives, it's almost a complete mini. It's got the engine, it's got a fair bit of the interior. Potentially, this could be back on the road with not too much effort in you know mechanically but bodywork wise there does appear to be quite a bit there that might need to be done so as we go through we can see that they do they've taken the seats out for the picture but we can see they do have the seats and they do have other parts so it's almost pretty much a complete mini you never know until you get these things what nuts and bolts and stuff are missing and what little switches and what little relays and stuff but i think this is kind of interesting again there's some kind of surface rust under here it wouldn't be a mini without rust but when you see the prices that minis are going for, potentially I think that if that was a £400 cheaper, it would be a bargain. And the prices at the moment, and with the potential rust that needs to be addressed with it, I can't tell myself personally if the price is right or not. In fact, one thing we could do to kind of verify that, we'll check back in on this mini in a week's time. But this mini's got an MOT on it until August. Let's see what these go for. And if this goes for under a couple of grand, we can kind of ignore everything I've just said about the one we've just looked at. But if this goes for sort of way more than a couple of grand, it kind of sort of paints the picture of where mini pricing is at the moment. Right, car number nine is a Nissan Silvia S12. It's, it's a turbo car. And let's have a quick look through the pictures. Now, I think they've done themselves a disservice with the way they've started the listing, because that's what shows up when you search for it. And you don't see a picture of the car till right at the end. Sometimes that's the key to getting yourself a bit of a bargain on eBay because of people tend to gravitate towards looking to a whole car picture. So this has seen some better days, but it doesn't actually look terrible apart from rust on the sills. But I think that this could potentially be sort of a roadworthy car for not too much money. However, it's an auto. But I think the prices of the S12s, they're not too bad because of the S13s and the S14s are commanding so much more money. The AE86s, you know, anything Japanese and rear wheel drive normally, uh, from this kind of era, it normally commands a much higher price. And I'm seeing a couple of these working, being sold for, you know, in full operating condition, being sold for about 2000. I think if that goes for around 1000, it's probably a good price. So we'll check on this next week and see where that gets to. And car number 10, I've literally picked because I used to play it in Toka Touring Cars. I used to use a Laguna in that, and I like the classic livery that it's got. So this is a 3 liter V6, it's front wheel drive, and this one is actually MOT'd. Um, I, didn't, I don't know how they've managed that. Maybe they put the seats back in for the MOT, but this one looks like it's pretty well looked after. And if we have a look inside, we can sort of see it's sort of normal driving area, but they've taken everything else out. So no seats here, there's no rear seat. It's been stripped out, it's quite lightweight. I expect that this would be fairly quick and quite a bit of fun. Um, I think the price they're asking for it's you know, not too bad. And you kind of buying someone's finished project here for you to just go away and enjoy. I'm not sure on MOT rules are taking the seats away because of I thought that if you present it for an MOT, it needs to have the amount of seats that it says it has on the V5. I suppose it depends on the tester and if they're a special MOT test center. But yeah, I bet this thing is fairly quick and quite a bit of fun. Um, you're not gonna fly under the radar with it, but that's not the point. Okay guys, that's it for the end of this week's video. I just wanna let you know I'm gonna change the format a bit going forward to make things a bit more concise and also so we can go back and look at how much things have ended for. Now, it's not possible for me to track everything, I'm afraid. One of the reasons for that is the way that eBay manage their listings now and also sometimes sellers they'll accept to buy it now or they'll pull a listing because they've put it up for sale and classified elsewhere and pulled it from eBay they're not meant to do it but it happens so just an example of this that Zondera replica we were looking at last week that was about two thousand pounds I mentioned it had quite a few bits of parts in it and that's actually finished for three thousand six hundred now I can see it in my eBay because I put it on watch but if I go to the listing itself it fires me to a list of bloody camper trailer tent. Um, not really related, but that's what eBay are doing at the moment. So there's no way to kind of see it unless I actually personally want it. So I could do that with the RX-7, for example. So what I'm going to do going forward, it might only be five cars a week to look at, but we have a bit of a look at was the guess for what that price was the week before right or not. 
Okay guys, so thank you very much for watching. It'd be interesting to hear your comments and feedback down below. Let me know if you think that cars are overpriced, if they're junk, if they're not worth anything, and what cars that you'd personally be looking to buy yourself. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Please share this video with anyone that you think would find it interesting, and more than anything, thank you for watching.